Good evening and welcome to yet another episode of Beating COVID-19, Talking Heads Edition. Today we're going to talk about a very interesting sub- topic concerning a uh, lunchbox and filling your tank. They were supposed to be two separate ca- stories, but I'll just cover them as one because the script isn't that large. Over this week we've been talking about the most important things in preparation for your return to work. We believe and hope that tomorrow, the 6th of June, will be a good time and a good day when we can go back to work and do this kind of economic activities that build the nation and build ourselves. However, we need to prepare you for the return to work formula just in case you realize that the COVID-19 pandemic has made things a little different. So we started by asking you to take a day of rest. That was day one. On day two, we talked about creating your survival toolkit which was the mask sanitizer wipes and practicing the four c's of clean your hands cover your face keep keep a uh, clear distance or chill at home we went on to talk about getting a pack of strepsils strepsils is your new bff and then also we talked about your shift arrangement working your shift hours Today we want to talk about the lunchbox and tomorrow we want to talk about fueling up your car. However, today I can talk about both of them because they are really relatively small, which will then leave us with one last uh, discussion for tomorrow night, which I will tell you at the end of this session. So let's get down to it. Now, the lunchbox. The lunchbox is a good idea because You get to carry, you get to choose, you get to pack your own meals. Number one, there is a benefit. You get to control the contents. As you go back to work, you do not want to be in a position whereby food, your food has been handled by two or three different people from whom you don't know. So how do you conquer that problem? Carry a lunchbox. Empty or full, it's okay. Just carry a lunchbox. Why? A lunchbox is a direct from pan solution. You walk into a shop, they want to sell you chips or some chips and chicken. You give them a lunchbox, they just pack it in here. They take it out of the fryer into your lunchbox. Close your lunchbox. You see, so the food, the quality and uh, purity of the food is not tampered by a guy packing it into a brown bag, then packing it into another bag, then throwing in the tomato sauce and then giving you a pack. Because you do not know the status of the people who will serve you. You hope that they are not sick. But if you want to be sure that the meals that you get are well managed, then you can come with a lunchbox and just take it to the to the to the shop and give it to them and say, please serve these things from the kitchen street into my lunchbox. Don't give me a takeaway box or anything, just serve it directly in here. Number three, if you have a lunchbox that's insulated, you can keep your food warm for long. Which means if you are if you are on diet or if you are if you are not eating or your eating times are not, or you know you want to work through the day so that you can get home early, you can keep your lunch with you and carry it home. Insulated lunch boxes are available. You can go to your regular supermarket. Lock and Lock, hint they do not sponsor any of these videos. Lock and Lock have good lunch boxes. I use a Lock and Lock, but I also have a Tiffin, uh, an Indian Tiffin, uh, is a four stack which I can use, but I don't use it right now. The Tiffin is also a good way to carry separate batches of food. It's cheaper because you only, you eat food that you've made at home. So you don't have to spend lunch money or anything, but you can actually keep a low, a low budget, eat healthy and keep things in check. In the coming economy, money is scarce because business has been, has collapsed for a while. So you may not have a lot of disposable income to keep spending. So choose your lunchbox well. Choose it that it has a quantity that can, you can suffice to enjoy. Now, insulated or not, what will be better? It, depending on what kind of food that you get. If, if, if you are a soup kind of guy and you want to keep the soup warm, insulated would be fine. Like an insulated flask or something like that. But if, if, you, if you just want average meals, no problems, no heat issues, then either insulated or not will be okay. The, the key thing is that wash after use, let it drip dry, and then clean it out, and then make it ready for the next day. I also add you coffee mugs, insulated coffee cups, you can use for tea, milk, even cold water would be fine all the way. Um, 
if you are like me and you like a glass of ice cold water let me see if i can get my growler here you could get yourself one of these sorry it's all showing up here yeah. come on where are you come on show hey where what's up yeah this is a grow is a growler it's a um, one and a half liters i think so you can carry your nice cold water in a great in a nice looking container yeah so that too keep it away so um the lunchbox scenario is for your good health and it also prevents hand-to-hand -hand transmissions so in case you let's say for example in your normal day you have food that is prepared um by a third party so somebody brings food to the office which they have either made themselves or they have bought from somebody who makes food so we don't know where the food started and because of its you know sometimes you have people buy it in bulk and then repackage for themselves and then come and deliver to you so there's a lot of hand holding that has gone through your food preparation so i urge you also just to reconsider the lunch box it may look like a clumpy thing to carry but i can tell you it's worth it's worth it's worth it by far i i carry a lunch box every day when i go to work because i'm 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 on a diet that means i don't have to eat i am on a keto diet so possibly my meal start in the afternoon so I'm, I carry it in, go to the kitchen and ask the, the chef or the cook for the day. Just pack me a meal without carbohydrates and then that'll be fine. So that's it for the lunch boxes. That's your daily fuel. Now let's talk about your vehicle's fuel. I, I know many, many of you may not have vehicles. Many of you do have vehicles. Many of you know people who have vehicles, colleagues and friends. And I urge you to also consider for the first few days that find a way to get to your office that's safe uh, whereby you can trust the passengers you have so we should begin a culture of carpooling so that we can work together to get people home safe and sound now here are some eight tips um, to help you um, to keep your car running uh, efficiently cleanly and these are usually fuel tips I mean it's just simple fuel tips you may have had them number one fill your car at night or early in the morning this is a rather interesting thing because these fuel tips i got them from an indian company so they urge you to fill your car at night or early in the morning and why because of temperature temperature of fuel when served cold actually is more is uh, has not expanded so you may inch in a little more fuel when served cold when you take fuel in the heat of the day it expands and the gas is up quite a lot. Uh, number two, fill in your tank when half. Don't let it finish because normally it says it can sometimes uh, take the dirt that is at the bottom of the tank and push it into the uh, fuel filter. And that can cause you problems later. Yeah, when you go to the service station, insist that they don't flash your, you know, like full speed on the throttle when they're pumping in your fuel. Keep it slow or medium that should do you well because the faster they pump the fuel the more vapor it forms um, when you reach a service station look around just make sure that the 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 tanker is not filling the underground tanks while you're fueling because as they fill in the tanks all the dirt and grime and even water that's at the bottom of the tank will be disturbed and it will, it will form a suspension in your fuel which will be fed to you because the pumps don't care what where whether the fuel you know condition is they just suck from the underground tank so try to, to to be aware of your surroundings when you come to a service station check your tire pressure because tires warm up as you drive make sure your tire pressure is optimum so that you can keep your car efficient no drag and you can use less fuel because your tire pressure is good empty your car keep unwanted stuff out of the car you know most times we have the car piling up with stuff so your boxes and cartons and weights and stones and everything that you've carried in the, in the week the more heavier your car the more the car has to work to move you so try as much as possible to reduce the weight of things in your car that way you'll be able to have a lighter car and you know there is an advantage to what's that word again it's it's a very common term used in um, in um, in racing cars power to weight ratio lighter car and the power remains the same you have a very good power to weight ratio um replace your spark plugs 
because spark plugs um, do burn out sometimes or they're inefficient or they cause smoking or they form a, there's some um, soot forming on them it's always good to have your spark plugs checked and changed that way it keeps your car burning fuel cleanly and number eight service get your car out to service so that you know oil filters and stuff can be changed and then you can be able to drive a car which has got another 5,000 kilometers or 11,000 kilometers or 16,000 kilometers depending on the type of service you take. That means that if you, if you got your service done now when the fuel prices are low and the oil prices are low and all things are pricing, the fuel product prices are low, you have another five to 16,000 kilometers depending on the car, the type of service and the type of oil used to have that car during this initial period when COVID-19 is getting uh, is passing away and we are settling into the new economy it will mean you will have less time to take your car to the garage to be serviced and serviced and serviced ahead now um i think that that covers that and the articles and benefits of all these things will be posted in the subsequent notes and scripts from facebook and youtube i add you and i thank you all for all the good comments and encouragement that i've got this week during this talking head series and i'm grateful to all of you for taking the time to listen a time to read through, the time to check the references, and the time to respond. These times are hectic, and I know it has taken you a, a chunk of time just to get through the content that I'm doing. I'm just grateful that you do. Um, tomorrow, I want to talk about a very simple thing of how to disinfect your car. It's, it's a simple process. It's a simple thing that you need to do. And, you know, if your car is going to be carpooling, you need to be able to quickly disinfect your car before you start your day or even after you return home so that your car or even during the day as you are working you should be able to find that your car is disinfected so tomorrow we shall talk about disinfecting your car maybe on the inside on the outside maybe a little different because outside disinfection is not hard you can just wash it but the inside disinfection the surfaces and all those are the things you want to tackle tomorrow have yourselves a good night i want to thank you once again and see you in the next one